how I sound on the guitar. Everything I'm playing sounds stale. It sounds boring. But I think this is a good thing. And I think that because I've felt this way many, many times before, and I recognize that I'm just in a phase of a cycle that I think we all go through. And I think if we can recognize this cycle as a natural progression, as part of our growth as musicians, then we'll just have a much easier time with the whole endeavor. We'll see more progress. We'll see better results. We'll, it'll just be smoother. We'll be less on the roller coaster. We can recognize kind of where we are, um, in this cycle that I think that we do all experience. If you've ever hated how you sound, then this might be helpful to hear my thoughts on this that I want to share with you today. Uh, I'll share why I think this means we're exactly on the right track because we're just in one part of a four phase cycle that eventually leads to breakthroughs. So if you're feeling down about your playing or just, you don't feel like you love how you sound, but you're still showing up and trying. I think that means a breakthrough is around the corner. Let's talk about it. I'm Jared Borkowski from soundguitarlessons.com where I have courses that teach musicianship skills so guitarists can express themselves more freely and confidently through improvisation, arranging, fretboard theory, mastery, and much more. If you're new here, welcome. Please follow and subscribe. I have new lesson videos every week on my YouTube channel, and I'm just starting this new series where I'm doing a podcast-style episode once a month like this one. So I said I felt this way many times in the past, and I can think of very specific moments where this happened to me and I was in this, this phase of reflecting on my playing and not liking it. One time that really sticks out in my mind early on when I was very serious about practicing, I was certainly improving rapidly and I was taking it really seriously, but I thought I sounded really good. And I was jamming with some friends of mine and different friends set up some recording equipment and we were in this space and just, you know, having a, having a jam session and recorded it. And then I listened back to it and I did not like how I sounded at all. It just didn't sound natural to me. It didn't, it sounded stilted and it wasn't how I kind of, I think I had a vision of where I was going towards and I was going towards there, but, uh, my feel was my phrasing, you know, it just didn't feel right. Certainly didn't sound like the players I was trying, you know, listening to and inspired by, uh, so I, at the time I was, I was really working hard and I, it was great. I kind of course corrected and, and took that as information to work with and, and improve upon. And I kind of had a breakthrough that fixed the problems that I heard, but this kept happening again and again in different ways. And I started recognizing when it's kind of coming around and coming around and coming around, uh, what's happening in my playing and kind of why this is happening. So what I notice, and very likely you've noticed this as well, and I think we all kind of intuitively know this, but I just like to talk about this stuff. What I notice is that there's, you know, the really good feeling in our playing, the exciting, uh, we learn something new, whether it's straight up a lick or a new approach or scale or just sound or technique or anything, and it feels exciting. Maybe we can't do it yet, but something feels, it feels new. It feels fresh, right? We're working on new stuff. That's kind of this, the best feeling. And then we love it so much that we work on it and we get it into our playing. And in my case, as an improviser, um, I would have something like, oh yeah, this feels great. I'm going to go do this thing again and this thing again. And it feels really fresh, this new idea. Like for example, I did a video just recently on playing the diminished scale over dominant seventh chords in the blues progression. So something like that might feel really fresh after playing just the blues scale or just mixolydian or just, um, whatever kind of vanilla sound inside court, just chord tones. And I like to practice all this stuff, but something like playing the diminished scale, superimposing it over a dominant seventh chord, that's not necessarily altered or anything can just be this kind of a little bit outside fresh sound. And I remember moments like that were like, oh, this sound helps so much to make it sound a little more interesting. And now I'm going to use it all the time. And it just feels fresh, 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 fresh. It feels great, but it feels so great that I overuse it. And then I'm so comfortable with it. And it just, then that's when it starts to feel stale. So there's kind of the new, exciting, fresh, and then using it so much that it feels stale. And then I'll back off from that thing and um, use it less. And it can kind of become part of my vocabulary. But when it hits this moment of feeling stale and not sounding good, which is kind of the, the phase that I'm talking about being in right now for my playing, 
Uh, I think there's the fresh phase, the stale phase, and then the searching phase, because after feeling that way, so long as we don't let it rock our boat and we just, you know, we keep going forward, we naturally are going to search for the next thing, right? We're naturally going to search for something else that feels fresh again, right? So then we're, it's not going to happen instantly, but this might be why you're watching guitar lesson YouTube videos to learn, you know, something fresh, something new, something that feels exciting again, or learning off a recording or just experimenting and finding something or being so sick of how we sound, this stale phase that I'm calling it. I get so sick of how I sound that I search, search, search for something. And then I think the breakthrough phase happens. So the phases I'm talking about here are fresh, stale, search, breakthrough, and call it whatever you want. And, you know, maybe different variations of that. But I think I've just felt going through that cycle so many times. And I think we're all kind of going through that. So long as we keep persevering, when we have those moments of feeling like we don't sound like we want to sound, I think a breakthrough is really close right around the corner. And by going through this cycle many, 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 many times over, all these things that were fresh and then stale, and then we search for the new thing, well, some of them stand the test of time. And that's how we get a massive kind of vocabulary, all these approaches, or have our own voice, because these things that were fresh at one point and then stale at one point, and then long term, they just become actual um, vocabulary sounds, if you will, that we can go to straight up when we want to hear it. Right. And that's the ultimate goal, being expressive and saying something, communicating, feeling it, you know, all of that stuff, improvising in, in the case of what we're talking about here in, in my journey of jazz guitar, at least, but it applies to all other types of playing and really all kinds of things. But this, instead of it being fresh or stale, it's just like, oh no, now we just know there's a moment, for example, this diminished scale over Dama seventh chord, instead of overusing it, or instead of it, fe you know, feeling so exciting, we use it and then it feels stale because we use it too much. Now it's just, oh, we know it so well, we're so intimate with it that it's actually going to come out when we want to hear it. We get a pile of those things and then we're playing truly what we want to say, truly, you know, what we want to hear. Now we'll still get sick of that repertoire, if you will, um, and then have the search phase, have the stale phase, have the search phase, have the breakthrough phase, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, but I'm sharing this because it's so helpful for me to think of it this way, that now when I feel stale about my playing, I have, I love, I'm excited because I'm like, oh, I'm ready to, I'm ready to find something new. I'm ready to, I can't wait to get to that breakthrough. I wonder what it's going to be, what uh, I'm ready to explore instead of just using what I have. One last side note about this that I think is worth reflecting on is just that by going through these phases and even the downer phases and feeling like discouraged or you, we don't like how we sound, uh, I think it's, it's also a good thing because it just means we're doing it, right? We're showing up, we're taking a risk, we're going for it. And whether that, that can be different for everybody, right? Does that just mean showing up and playing, practicing, trying to trying to enjoy it or challenging ourselves to practice better or playing with friends or actually playing out in the world or whatever it is, there's no right answer for that. But by going through the cycles and the ups and downs and, and these phases that I'm talking about, including what feels like, ooh, I don't like how I sound yet. I think it's such, such an amazing thing to recognize that 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 means we're taking a risk, right? That means we're trying to do something in life that makes us feel good and we're not running away from it because it's hard, because of course it's hard. And, we and of course, all the most rewarding things are hard, right? Do we just want to be comfortable all the time and not be challenged, not have somewhere to reach for and not have somewhere to go? So these moments of like, that I'm in right now are like, oh, I don't like how I'm playing. It's happening because I've been showing up with even more intention and more focus than I was before. Recently, I have been. So I, I'm taking it more seriously than I was for a little while, or just kind of doubling down. I'm just kind of going in deeper on it, um, especially jazz guitar, which I talked about recently on my channel that I am focusing a little more specifically on that. And I think that that has enhanced my, my taste and what I feel like I'm capable of and what I'm reaching towards. And then it's made me realize that I am not, you know, accessing certain, certain things that I want to access. And so it's a good thing. It's a good sign. It means like, oh, I, I'm t I stepped outside of my comfort zone and I'm in this and here we go. And that's why, you know, breakthrough is right around the corner because you get, jump into the deep end a little bit and learn how to swim. Uh, so another reason to look at it that way, I love just being in it 
and just feeling like I'm not avoiding it and avoiding it and kind of dabbling in it or just kind of barely keeping it going. Even the consistency is important. Sometimes we got to just do that, but we don't feel these things as much during just the like, I'm barely keeping it going and consistent. I'm just playing. We're kind of just maintaining or dabbling in things that we already know how to play. But when we're really pushing, trying to get to the next level, all these feelings come up and the phase starts. The phases start happening, including the breakthroughs, which are the the funnest part. So I'll report back on maybe what my breakthrough becomes. Of course, you'll hear about it because I teach all the stuff. I like to teach anything I'm playing and practicing. So I'll be putting lesson videos out on whatever I'm exploring. One thing that was a breakthrough for me, and I hear from students all the time that it's a breakthrough for them, which is why I teach about it, is scale patterns for improvisers. And especially early on when we're trying to improvise with scales, it just sounds like scales. It just sounds like scales up and down. So I have a PDF that is my top three favorite pentatonic scale patterns that are breaking up the notes into different orders in a specific pattern and it just makes a world of a difference that's a that's a breakthrough thing that's why i put it together it's just one simple sheet of tabs and notation you can get that for free with the link in the top of the description or you can go to soundguitarlessons.com slash three patterns that's number three and then the word patterns. Um, and it's just shows you up and down the normal pentatonic scale that we're all used to, most of us anyway, the pentatonic scale shape, uh, breaking those up into a certain order of notes. So it's a pattern. I rely on that a lot for my playing. It's one of those things that went into fresh, played it extremely, got stale, and now it's just baked into my normal vocabulary. And I absolutely love it. And I hear people telling me all the time that that has helped them break through to, to the next level as well. And they ask for PDF uh, tabs of it, which is why I made that. So you can get that for free uh, if you want that resource uh, thing that makes sense to share after a lesson like this. I've always done talking videos like this here and there, but now I'm doing them once a month and I'm going to post them as a podcast. Uh, feel free to let me know what you think in the comments. My other videos are pretty didactic, serious guitar practice, step-by-step -step exercises. Uh, and I post one every single week on Tuesdays. And I'm just getting started on this uh, regular schedule of the talking episodes for ideas, strategy, mindset, just stuff that we can chat about, have conversations about. Uh, so you can let me know if you're into that or not into that. I like to hear feedback when I'm trying new things. So thanks so much. Hope to see you in my lesson video next week on YouTube. Take care and happy practicing. Mm -hmm.